Hi, in this video, we are going to talk all about being a police wife or dating a cop who is in the police academy. I'm Kristen and I have been a police wife for nine years now and I have an Instagram page where I have a community called Heels and Holster and I have a blog, a book, and lots of resources. You can check them out in the link um, in the description. And I'm so excited because this topic comes up a lot. If you are with someone who's in the police academy, then they are going through a lot. They're going through a lot of change and I'm gonna have a future video about how um, maybe our police husbands or police boyfriends change um, after becoming a law enforcement officer. It is a big deal. Um, but in this video, I have a lot of tips for you to how to thrive. Um, when you are with someone who is in the police academy and kind of how to help them. Um, I actually dated my officer 10 years on and off before he was a law enforcement officer. So I got to kind of see that change in him, both good and challenging sometimes as well. And um, I also was dating him on and off. So we were not officially together actually when he was in the academy, but we were together during probation. Um, and probation is kind of similar. I'll talk a little bit about that, but actually my husband Rick tells me probation was more stressful than the academy. Um, and I asked him for his own tips before making this video and I have a blog about this as well. Um, and one of the major things that he said that he would have needed from me is the gift of time. So um, he used to go to the academy in Los Angeles where they just go for the day and then they're able to go home. Some academies I have learned, they go and they stay there for like months um, and that is a different format. So obviously you have to give them the gift of time if they are moving away from you for a little bit, but um, maybe being patient with their responses to you via text or calling or video time with them. Um, so he said like a lot of times his academy day would be like nine to five, um, but then he would also work out in the morning before and or after. Um, everyone is different on what skills they need to work on. Maybe they need to work on the written like study skills or they need to work out. That was his, he wanted to get in better shape. Um, they also have uh, shooting skills that they have to gain and he was okay on that. So he really focused on developing, like getting in shape. And so he would work out with um, his now best friend who was in the academy with him. And that is something I didn't have in my notes, but your um, spouse or your boyfriend is going to make hopefully really good friends in the academy that maybe become lifetime friends. And that's what's really happened for Rick. And I'm so happy for him because this person, a couple of people that are in the academy are kind of like our family now. And he has been officer now for 15 years. So it's a long time to have family members. But regarding the time tip is just to know that they are going to need that time to themselves and really not depend on them. So I have a lot of other tips to like help you thrive because of that. Um, so the next thing is to cheer him on. So they're gonna get grilled. And my husband said actually during the probation time is when he got grilled a lot more, like kind of tough love. Um, but in the academy, they do too, right? It's military style training, uh, it's very intense and they're not afraid to tell you that you need to do a better job. And so it's really hard on them. So to make sure that you are supportive, in order to do that, you need to take care of yourself as well, right? So self-care, I always preach. And actually, I have a course coming up. I'm starting a group coaching course um, in January. And I have signups now. I will link that in the description below to really help to prevent any resentment or loneliness feelings. And I think that would be perfect for anyone whose spouse or boyfriend is going through the academy. Um, so check that out. The third tip is to take care of all the things. So... It's pretty easy to assume that that would be on you if your spouse or boyfriend is going away for the academy, but if they are going to like what almost seems like a job, like a nine to five job, Monday through Friday, they have their trainings and then they come home, you kind of assume that they can help. What I have learned as a police wife is that we cannot assume that our spouse will help. I always assume it's all on me and then if he helps, I'm thankful. Like literally, that is what helps 
me to stay sane. In order to do that, it's not all on me. I ask for help from professionals. I make sure that all everything is taken care of. And if I feel overwhelmed, I ask for help from Rick sometimes, or maybe I'll hire a professional to help me with housekeeping, or we'll go out to eat, <laughs> you know, like um, make sure you give yourself a break when needed. Um, but just assume you're gonna have to take care of more things. And I know I have some followers on Instagram that have farms and, um, that means they have to take care of all the farm stuff themselves. That's really overwhelming. So maybe you need to hire an assistant or something to help you out or with daycare. Maybe you need to make sure you have more coverage if it's going to burn you out. Um, so just make sure that you do those kinds of things. And that was my next tip is to ask for help. This can be really hard for us. I have a blog on asking for help and I will link it below. If you have trouble asking for help, um, you, it just, you don't know how to be assertive, maybe you're either passive or too aggressive about it, you feel uncomfortable, check it out because I show you how I specifically ask Rick for help when I need it. Um, and it's either help from him or maybe, like I said, we need to pay for help. Of course, if you have family around, don't be afraid to ask um, for them as well. And something that I wanna cover in my program, um, my group coaching program is that I wanna cover building our tribe because a lot of us try to do everything alone and that's not the right way either. We definitely need to have a tribe and I will talk to you about building your own tribe locally and then also virtually. It's really nice to have virtual community too. Um, the next thing is to use humor. So you will notice that your boyfriend or spouse is getting a kind of dark sense of humor and at first it can be a little surprising if they didn't do that before, but this is actually, even if you look at the research, a key part of resiliency. So embrace that dark sense of humor. Sometimes Rick can be a little bit too much for me and I tell him that, but in general, we like joke around a lot. It keeps things light and fun and maybe the academy and or um, probation time is really serious and it's stressful and they're dealing with really stressful things. Um, and so, Keeping it light and funny is awesome. And I try to do that on my Instagram, have really funny reels for us to relate to each other. Um, the next thing is that during time off together, really try to have quality time and enjoy time together. So um, that's really important. We have two little kids. So whenever Rick is home at all, it's really about us. It's about the family. We do spend time with friends. Um, and go on dates every once in a while, but it is kind of rare. We really uh, just assume that we are gonna be together um, on his days off. Now, that's when he's really off. So if he's in the academy and he wants to work on developing skills outside the academy, like working out, studying, whatever, then that's not really time off together. So just know that and try to respect it the best you can and then enjoy when you guys are off together. Um, Rick is honestly, he loves hanging out with our boys and that's super helpful for me. So when he's home and he's off, that's when I get a lot of stuff done. I'll be like, hey, I need to clean the house. Um, I'll run and get groceries. Um, but when Rick is super busy, I know I'll do a lot of grocery pickup. I'll do a lot of like grocery drive up so that I don't have to go in the store with my two active boys. Um, and then the next thing is Rick loves it when I make him lunches. So um, if your spouse or boyfriend, if you're dating a cop that is a local um, and going to be coming home in the evenings, you can make them lunches. You could leave them little sweet notes and um, that'll just kind of make their day and maybe give them something positive if they're having a tough time. And I hope that they reciprocate and maybe they are texting you also sweet notes back, things like that. Um, and then the next thing is gifts. So I have a blog on gifts for police officers. Uh, there's practical gifts in there. I'm a very practical person, um, but maybe new, um, there's like these awesome socks. Everyone loves ORP um, socks. I have a gift code in the description. It's an affiliate code, but like I literally, Rick loves those socks and I get them for um, him and I asked for an affiliate code. So I have a discount code in the description. That's just a really practical gift. They're ergonomic and my antimicrobial. Um, and so definitely check those out. But there's other things that you could get for them that are just little nice things, maybe just like under t-shirts for them to wear, like, cause they get sweaty and have to get new ones, things like that. Again, I was pretty practical, but there are other cool gifts that you could get them as well. The last thing, because so much of this that I'm telling you is about your spouse or the cop that you're dating, 
um, is that you need to treat yourself. So make sure that during this time, you're not neglecting yourself. You're not putting it all on yourself and expecting yourself to do absolutely everything alone without self-care. So I have a video that I will link below that is on very easy to do self-care methods that you could do every day that are just little things. For example, when times have been really stressful as a police wife and I feel like I'm doing a lot on my own and like our boys were babies and toddlers and like I wasn't sleeping, I always looked forward to a chai tea latte in the morning. I bought stuff so I could make it at home so I didn't have to go to Starbucks. And like, even if I didn't sleep much the night before, it would just make me happy in the morning. So think of those little things and make sure that you are doing those little things that are sustainable for yourself every day. Working out is another really big one for me. Um, I work out to free YouTube videos. I love Sydney Cummings lately. I've loved MadFit and I will link their channels below. They are awesome. Um, they're free and MadFit has like really quick 15 to 20 minute body weight workouts. You don't need much space or equipment. It's amazing. And I've kind of leveled up to Sydney Cummings because my boys are a tad bit older and they let me work out a little longer. And um, I just do it when I'm home with them. And I have like one pair set of weights and um, I now got a booty band. It's really exciting. So I hope that you will remember to take care of yourself. And I hope this video helped you if it did. In addition to my program coming up, which I'd love you to check out, I also have a book that is a police wife devotional that has 42 stories of my dating time with Rick. We did it for 10 years on and off. So I tell stories of like our growth moments in our relationship. So I hope that it will help you to normalize things that you go through. I wrote it for you, um, for things that I know are common for people to go through in a police or law enforcement relationship. So thank you so much for watching. I will be posting a new video every Monday, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.